Uh, good morning again parents and turbo kids. The topic that we're going to be exploring today in our kids talk is anger. So that's because one of the ways that God describes himself in Exodus 34 is by the phrase slow to anger. So through this series, the good thing about learning about what God is, is that we can focus on how to become like him. So obviously we as people would do well to become more merciful and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. So to help with this, I wanted to clarify some things that are often misunderstood about the emotion called anger. So we can be slow to anger. Now the first thing that's very important to understand about anger is that it is a feeling that has a very real effect on your whole body. Now a good example of this, I found out last week, around the kitchen table with my kids at dinner time. So it was the end of a big day, I was pretty frustrated, I was already tired, the kids were taking a long time to finish their dinner, they were stuffing around, annoying each other, not listening when I told them to stop and eat their dinner, um, so pretty standard dinner time at my pace. But I could feel this feeling rising in me, it was anger, alright? The longer this went on, the more that I could feel it rising up. Now most of the time, I'd probably just raise my voice, yell at them, and get them to listen. But for some reason this night, I was just really aware of what was going on inside my body. And I decided to just drop it, leave them at the table to eat the rest of their food, and then go and stack the dishwasher. So as the night went on, you know, there was no drama. But after that, later I had the thought, you know, I might just check my stats on my fitness tracker. And sure enough, right after 7pm, right on dinner time, my heart rate spiked at 117 beats per minute. And that was exactly when I could feel my anger rising. Now, no one else in the room would have noticed anything different. I held it together, went and did something constructive without saying a word. But for me and my watch, we knew exactly what was going on. Um, if I had other devices monitoring me, they would have measured my muscles tensing up and my breathing becoming faster, the body temperature and blood pressure rising as well. But just as quickly as it rose, 10 minutes later, it was actually back down to 71 beats per minute again. And it was fine for the rest of the night. So out of this example, it's clear to see that anger is actually an emotion that affects your body. But I want to illustrate that anger is just an emotion. Anger is not the same as aggression. Aggression is behavior. So anger is how you feel. Aggression is what you do. All right. The reason we get mixed up a lot is that because anger is a motivating emotion. It makes you do things. Unfortunately, it's much easier to be aggressive than to behave constructively. So anger and aggression, they often, you know, they just thought of as the same thing. Now might be a really good time for you to get angry. That's my secret, Cat. I'm always angry. Now, it's also not helpful just to stuff it all down and not act on your anger. That's called stewing. So stewing is a behavior too. Now, that might be less damaging to the people around you, but you mess up your own body if you do that for too long. So it causes more health issues over time. But what if God gave us an emotion of anger not to aggressively avenge ourselves or to test out how much we can stuff down into our hearts? But as James 1.20 says, human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires, we could, might actually be able to use our anger to motivate us to do the right thing, if it's godly anger. So this is how I believe God uses his anger. He might be slow to anger, but he certainly still gets angry. So what angers God? Well, obviously, sin. Which in another word is just selfishness. So sins like injustice, which is treating other people badly, and disobedience, which is treating God badly. And the warning is there. In Ephesians 5, 6, it says, the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. And Colossians 3, 5, 6 says, don't be greedy, for the greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. But when it comes down to how we can act, anger is a useful emotion. It helps us respond to sin. And if it's expressed in a reasonable way, it's actually a force for positive change. So the Bible even tells us in Ephesians 4 and Psalm 4, be angry and do not sin. So here's the takeaway. Anger is just an emotion. 
It's used to motivate you to action, and it's your choice what that action is, aggression or stewing. They'll cause damage, but constructively defeating sin and selfishness, that's the goal. So here's your conversation topic for your family talk today. What does it look like for you to take your anger and point it towards your sin? And Hulk. <sighs> Smash.